Since the end of the Gulf War, after more than 40 years, the US Army is once again equipped with light tanks. Can it still lead the global army reform? In the US Army's 248th anniversary ceremony, the US Army held a naming ceremony for the M10 Booker. This armored vehicle with a combat all weight of less than 40 tons, for which General Dynamics is the prime contractor, has previously been known as the Mobile Protected Firepower Program, essentially a product of the U.S. Army's reconstruction of high-intensity ground combat capabilities. Although it is a tracked armored vehicle equipped with a large-caliber gun, the U.S. Army has refused to classify it as a light tank. The Booker name honors two U.S. soldiers who were killed in action. Staff Sergeant Stephen A. Booker, who served as the M1 Abrams vehicle commander during the 2003 Iraq War, was killed in action during a combat mission in Baghdad and was later posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. Another was Private Robert D. Booker, who was killed in action as an infantryman in Tunisia in 1943 and was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. Since 2001, the U.S. Army has made counterterrorism its primary mission. After Rumsfeld took office, the Army underwent another information revolution. The two wars on terrorism in Afghanistan and Iraq have almost turned the U.S. Army into a vigilante army. The Congressional Research Service issued a report that, after a detailed study of ground combat systems in various countries, found that the current U.S. Army has many shortcomings. Because U.S. ground combat forces are still using main battle tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, self-propelled artillery, and multiple rocket systems. Potential U.S. adversaries have focused on developing new weapon systems and related technologies and have made significant advances in many areas. In the long run, the U.S. Army will sooner or later be overtaken by other nations. Add to this the resource constraints on systems traditionally procured by the U.S. Army and the cumbersome DoD procurement process. Even when the U.S. Army starts a new weapons development program, it often takes more than a decade or even decades to finally come up with the weapon systems the U.S. Army needs. The reason it takes so long is that the Budget Control Act passed by the U.S. Congress in 2011 drastically cut U.S. military spending, forcing the military to cancel many of its weapons programs. Coupled with the changing international situation, the once counterterrorism focused style of play is no longer appropriate for the U.S. Army. The current U.S. must rebuild high-intensity ground warfare capabilities for the Army. In order to change this status quo, the U.S. Army has proposed a plan to rapidly procure mobile protected firepower. The hope is to restore the ability to deal with high-intensity ground warfare in the shortest possible time. The study found that U.S. Army infantry brigades and other combat units lacked light, mobile armored firepower with excellent mobility in actual combat. The Mobile Protected Firepower Program is designed to change that. After all, the M1120, which is mainly equipped with Striker Combat Brigade, cannot let the infantry brigade level combat in ground combat while waiting for other troops to rescue or mobilize the M1A2 main battle tank. It would be better to simply equip an armored vehicle that can operate alongside wheeled vehicles. Relatively speaking, the M1A2 series tanks are too heavy and lighter tanks are instead better suited to either ground mobility or rapid airlift using the C-17 to meet the needs of infantry brigade combat units. The 2015 Mobile Protected Firepower Program intends to provide U.S. Army light infantry units with a mobile firepower system in the 30-ton combat full weight class to provide direct fire support for infantry operations. According to the design requirements, the mobile protected firepower was to have mobility beyond that of the M1 series tanks, with some firepower and protection. The C-17 was also required to be air transportable in two units at a time to ensure rapid deployment capability in future large-scale operations. In December 2018, the U.S. Army awarded BAE and General Dynamics development contracts within the framework of the Mobile Protected Firepower Program for $380 million and $35 million, respectively, to develop and manufacture 12 Mobile Protected Firepower prototype vehicles. The delivery date is within 14 months from the date of signing, and the operational evaluation will be completed within 18 to 19 months. General Dynamics chose to develop the Griffin II light tank based on the Griffin I light tank concept by combining and upgrading the chassis of the Ajax heavy infantry fighting vehicle with the turret fire control system of the M1A2 main battle tank. This tank has better firepower, mobility, 
and protection performance. The prototype developed by BAE is improved on the basis of the M8 armored gun system. This tank was introduced in the 1980s and 1990s as a new tank by the then United Defense Industries. The US Army began equipping it in 1995 to replace the M551 Sheridan light tank. However, in 1997, the US Army began to cut back on military spending, causing the M8 to be cancelled before mass production, and only six were eventually built. BAE had installed the XM-291 120mm tank gun for the M8 in 2000, but it was not accepted by the market. To participate in the Mobile Protected Firepower program, BAE redesigned the turret structure with a modular armor system and Elbit Systems Iron Fist Active Defense System. The autoloader-equipped XM-35 tank gun was retained, and the powertrain was upgraded with an MTU diesel engine and Allison 3040MX automatic transmission. This combat vehicle ensures that the C-17 transport can carry three at a time and has unparalleled airborne instincts. Due to delays by both manufacturers, it was not until April 2020 that the two competing prototypes were demonstrated to the US Army, and evaluations were completed in August 2021. There is no doubt that the prototype offered by General Dynamics was more competitive. After all, the Griffin II is based on the redesigned M1 main battle tank and has greater advantages in terms of logistics and production. In 2019, the US Congress appropriated $1.5 billion for the Army to procure 135 M1A2C main battle tanks from General Dynamics. After 18 months of production, the US Army had enough M1A2CS to equip a brigade. So in 2020, the Army received a second appropriation for the procurement of 174 M1A2CS. This means that the M1 tank production line is already running at high speed. It also meant that the Griffin II was ready for production. As a lighter version of the M1 tank, the Griffin II can use a large number of off-the-shelf components from the M1. This made it easier for the Army's decades-old M1 fleet logistics system. If the US Army chooses a general dynamics prototype, everything from production and training to logistical maintenance support is available. In contrast, BAE's mobile protected firepower prototype has a more obvious disadvantage. As a modernized version of the XM8, the biggest problem is that the XM8 has never been in mass production. Whether it's production lines or training, or logistics, which is basically equivalent to starting from scratch. In terms of performance, General Dynamics prototype has the same advantage. As a lighter version of the M1 series tank, the Griffin II can be equipped with similar or better weapon systems, such as the AM360 120mm lightweight smoothbore gun developed for the future combat system. And it is also fully compatible with the M1's existing ammunition system. Considering that the US Army's development of 120mm ammunition has chosen to continually pressurize and continuously improve the power and accuracy of the ammunition without compromising the life of the body tube, this has kept the US Army from choosing 55 by 120mm ammunition, always sticking to the 44XM256, and continuing the ongoing development of ammunition such as the M829 and AMP. In this regard, BAE's prototype would not have been a good match. Although the XM360 120mm tank gun uses a range of the latest material technologies to keep weight and recoil at two-thirds the level of the M256 tank gun. However, the XM360 size disadvantage results in a high demand for turret space. It was difficult to accommodate the XM360 120mm tank gun in such a compact hull as the mobile protected firepower. Leaving aside the technical problems encountered, even redesigning the mobile protected firepower to fit the XM360 would have been costly in terms of time. The time constraint is precisely what the US Army has repeatedly emphasized in the mobile protected firepower program. Moreover, BAE's mobile protected firepower prototypes were not great when it came to armor protection. The armored artillery system of 30 years ago is very different from the mobile protected firepower of 30 years later with the former placing more emphasis on strategic mobility. The previous M8 had a graded protection design, with a full combat weight of 18 tons at level 1 protection, 20 tons at level 2 protection, and 23.6 tons at level 3 protection. 
BAE's new combat vehicle is derived from the M8 prototype and is unlikely to exceed the level 3 protection level. The General Dynamics Griffin II, a lighter version of the M1 tank, is relatively more protective. Although it would have exceeded the Mobile Protected Firepower program's initial full combat weight limit, the U.S. Army quickly adjusted the program standards after prototypes emerged from the engineering and manufacturing development phases. The full combat weight was adjusted from no more than 32 tons to 38 tons. This shows that the U.S. Army was very satisfied with the General Dynamics prototype before choosing to release the limit. Although the mobile protected firepower resembles a light tank in appearance, the U.S. Army does not recognize it. Because mobile protected firepower will not go against enemy armored targets like the M1A2, its primary mission is infantry fire support, allowing infantry units to receive tank-level mobile direct fire support, which is why it is called the Mobile Protected Firepower System. In early 2022, BAE was eliminated, and General Dynamics became the only option in the Mobile Protected Firepower program. In July 2022, the U.S. Army announced that General Dynamics prototype won the Mobile Protected Firepower program and was awarded a $320 million contract. The first mobile protected firepower units, 26 in total, will be produced by October 24, 2024. It has now been officially named the M10 Booker MPF. Of the first 26 units, 8 were modified from the competing prototype. The chassis has a rear-mounted arrangement of power and drive units and cooling systems, with exhaust ports located on both sides of the vehicle. The combat weight was 35 tons, and the crew consisted of 4 people, including the driver, the gun commander, the vehicle commander, and the ammunition loader. The M10 turret is equipped with a 105mm M35 low-recoil wirebore gun, a 7.62mm M240 machine gun, and a 12.7mm M2 machine gun. The M35 low-recoil wirebore gun is hand-loaded and can fire the M900A1 105mm APFSDS as well as the M1147 advanced multipurpose round. The M10 is likely to be equipped with the AM360 120mm tank gun in the future. It is also equipped with the advanced fire control system used on the M1A2C. The M10 is equipped with the Raytheon gun length sight and the Paseo Modular Advanced Electro-Optical Sighting System from Safran, France, and comes standard with a gun length backup sight that can be used in case the gun length primary sight fails. In terms of protection, the M10's turret is made of aluminum alloy armor, and both the turret and hull can be externally armored to effectively withstand small and medium caliber armor-piercing rounds. The hollow storage boxes on the front and sides of the turret can also improve the level of protection against shaped anti-armor ammunition. In addition, the M10 is also mineproof and can be equipped with the Iron Fist Active Protection System to further improve the vehicle's protection. In terms of mobility, the M10 uses the MTU V8 engine, which provides a power output of 1,100 horsepower, equipped with an Allison 3040MX drivetrain. New advanced lightweight tracks developed by General Dynamics, hollow lightweight aluminum load wheels developed by Hutchinson, and suspension systems developed by Horstman are used. The maximum surface travel speed is 64 km per hour and can be transported by air using C-17 large transport aircraft, and two tanks can be transported by air in a single sortie. In addition to the above equipment, the M10 is also equipped with advanced onboard information systems and battlefield situational awareness equipment. After the announcement of the General Dynamics bid, the U.S. Army plans to equip 504 minutes and 10 seconds by 2035. Equipped for the U.S. Army and National Guard Infantry Brigade Combat Team, separate battalions will be formed, with one battalion divided into three companies, each equipped with 14 minutes and 10 seconds. The U.S. Army currently plans to build four battalions with a total planned life cycle cost of approximately $17 billion, including the full 30-year life cycle of production, maintenance, and training. Based on the tracked infantry fighting vehicle, the M10 can adapt to the U.S. Army's field requirements with heavy armored units while also being able to be rapidly deployed by air. It is also a bit more protective when intervening in low- to medium-intensity conflicts. Do you think that ground equipment similar to light tanks can continue to develop in the future? Welcome to discuss in the comments section, we will see you next time.